Hi everyone, it's Elizabeth from Alpus Astrology at alpusastrology.com. Thanks for joining me today. So today I am going to do my interpretation of the astrology in the year ahead for 2023. I'm going to start off with, as the usual, an introduction uh, to sort of lay the, um, uh, the sort of appearance of what I see the astrology is just generally speaking. And then I'll go into each of your ascendants and or uh, sun signs um, <clears throat> as to what I feel is important for you in 2023. Now, interestingly, I am making this video um, just prior to that uh, total full moon lunar eclipse that will be happening um, on the 8th of November, 2022. Um, so if you're listening to this early on and when I publish this, which will probably be after, the publishing of this will be after the eclipse for sure. Uh, just FYI, it does take a few days to process these videos. It's not just you make it and put it on YouTube. Um, so... I will discuss what uh, I feel has happened, etc., at that eclipse and the fallout from it and potential meaning in the future in my December uh, monthly video. All right, so let's get straight to it. Now, I personally feel as an overarching um, sort of, not theme, but um, sort of feeling of this 2023, we've got a lot of uh, planets that are changing signs uh, and I feel that this 2023 could actually be a very positive year, uh, just generally speaking from a collective level, where we actually see big changes happening that are positive. And then, of course, that translates down to an individual level. And I'll cover all that, as I said, in the individual signs. All right, so let's start going into some of the shifting and the ingresses. So when we talk about an ingress, we're just talking about a planet going into ingressing into a sign. So that's what we mean when we say that. So let's start off with Jupiter. So when we look at Jupiter, Jupiter is a 12 year cycle. So every 12 years, Jupiter is going to come around, right? To whatever sign it is in at that time. Now, Jupiter will go back into uh, uh, Aries towards literally the last few days of 2022, but it'll be fully in Aries starting in January, 2023, right the way through mid-month of May 2023. So it's really just there for just under half the year. So certainly if you've got your Jupiter in Aries, you know, this is what's called your Jupiter return year. It's a very lucky year. Um, like Saturn, Jupiter tends to leave its big gifts and benefits towards the end of when it's finishing off in the sign, not necessarily at the beginning. Sometimes with Jupiter, what happens is, is events happen or things happen to you uh, that are also unexpected, uh, but somehow shift something for you, especially in terms of where you're supposed to be growing, right? Jupiter as an essence and an influence is really asking us, wherever it is in your, your chart by transit, uh, to grow there, to expand ourselves, especially from a higher standpoint, right? But it can be like Santa Claus and bring you uh, lots of gifts and benefits. All right, so for those that do have Jupiter and Aries, uh, enjoy that first six months uh, or so of uh, 2023. And then of course, Jupiter goes into Taurus. And this, I think, really um, will smooth over um, a lot of Taurians and Taurian ascendances uh, feathers um, for not only the rest of 2023, so it's, it's mid-May, it's actually the 17th of May, 2023, Jupiter will ingress into Taurus. And it will stay there uh, till the 25th of May, 2024. I just see this as a really positive influence, um, not only for Taurians and Taurian ascendants, but for sure for those folks that have been going through Uranus upsets, changes, um, and just real surprising things <laughs> popping out of the woodwork. This Jupiter coming in here should really smooth things over and um, make things just a lot better. Bring benefits where there were none. Uh, maybe even bring in some money for those folks that need that too. Um, and really maybe help uh, you grow in this area, uh, generally speaking. We take it to a collective level. We're really looking here at growth probably in our money markets and maybe specifically in the real estate. 
Now, I mentioned in a previous video that there's going to be potentially in November 2022, you know, that line in the sand where eh, in the real estate market and maybe even in uh, investments, things are going to take a little bit of a turn where there's a readjustment. But this now Jupiter going into Taurus eh, has us maybe literally building more things. Construction could start uh, increasing at this time because, of course, Taurus is the master builder, right? Um, but certainly um, crops and that sort of thing could take on some new type of um, um, growth spurt where maybe we're looking differently at the way we grow our food. And um, certainly just from a standpoint of Jupiter being international, there may be some need uh, for growth internationally um, regarding food and food stuffs, right? Especially from mid-May onwards into... Um, you know, the end of May, basically 2024. Uh, but anyway, for all those Taurians, this could be something absolutely fabulous for you. And if I were to pick a month, I would pick May 2023 as a really outstanding month with regards to um, real solid, um, you know, when we look at Taurus, it's a very solid sign. It moves slowly. Um, it, it likes to get things right. It's persistent. And so we've got other things happening that will be, you know, reinforcing this whole Jupiter and Taurus. And that's going to be, um, we're going to have a, um, a full moon that's going to be happening towards the end of May. Um, but we also have an eclipse. Uh, actually, it's a new moon. But there's a full moon that's going to happen in Scorpio, also in May. And a full moon, of course, says that the sun's going to be in Taurus. So I was, I'd say May time period, there could be some big shifts um, on a collective level as well as from an individual level for those certainly that are Taurus or Taurus ascendances. So when we go up and look at uh, Saturn, Saturn's also going to be changing signs. It's going to ingress into Pisces. And so I think this is beautiful too. Um, if we look at um, Pisces, Pisces as operates at a very high level uh, if with regards to really our, our spiritual um, outlook on life, um, looking at things very compassionately. Um, on the extreme end, martyrdom could come up. So there has to be care taken with regards to feeling you're under this obligation. So that's kind of on the negative side. The Saturn in Pisces could say you're obligated to do this. And certainly if you um, have something that aspects uh, your chart, um, you might want to, you know, think about that. Um, it's great to be able to contribute to charities and um, to, you know, offer your services, but at the same time, you have to balance your life, right? And bring your own spirituality in to benefit you too. Now, of course, at this time, we're also going to have, um, Neptune is still in Pisces too. So we've got these both out of the planets here, really pulsating away. They're not conjunct in 2023. And so there's operating separately, uh, but they're still influencing spirituality, compassion, um, charity, that type of thing. Now, the other thing I thought uh, with the Saturn in Pisces was also, um, I mean, Pisces can also rule that realm of drugs and alcohol and just um, living in a fantasy world too, right? And I thought I love this Saturn in here because it's going to be bringing a reality check. And my hope is that we're going to have some real treatments available for those folks, um, either from a psychiatric standpoint and or maybe drugs and alcohol, where we're going to see some real progress um, and some more permanent structures in place that can actually assist those that need it in those areas. Um, I felt very optimistic about that. Now, Saturn takes, in terms of a cycle, Saturn is a 30-year cycle, so every 30 years, approximately, it will be coming round. So in 30 years time, uh, from 2023, it'll come round again into Pisces. But it won't have Neptune there. And uh, Saturn is about a two and a half year cycle. So we know that from 2023, we're going to have Saturn in Pisces for about two and a half years, influencing that sign. So certainly for Pisces, um, that maybe needed some structure, or Pisces Ascendants, um, needed maybe some structure into their lives, this could be your answer where, um, or you get some more permanent things happening in whatever area of your life 
um, is coming up with the Saturn influence, right? So it, uh, Saturn ingresses into Pisces on the 8th of March, 2023, till mid-February uh, 2026. And what's interesting in that time period uh, where it ends being in Pisces, February 2026, will just at that time also have Neptune uh, going into Aries. And I'll talk about that at a later time. That I see is the spiritual warrior, Neptune going into uh, Aries. So if we look at the last time, um, certainly that we had uh, Saturn here into Pisces, it was in February 1994. So certainly you can look back to see what was going on in February 1994 and for the two plus years that it stayed in uh, Pisces and uh, see maybe what themes came up for you or um, maybe what structures were put in place, maybe even new responsibilities that you had. So some folks it'll be um, maybe you got married or you had your first child or second child and that child now 30 years later is you know, making their own way in life. Um, as always, I love to hear from people, especially with long transits like this, 30-year uh, transits, it's always useful to hear people comment because you never know when you're actually helping somebody else, uh, not just giving information, but helping other people uh, that are viewers on my channel. So in terms of what aspects Saturn may be causing from a positive and negative standpoint over its two and a half year period in Pisces, we have squares that will be going to both um, Gemini and Sagittarius. So Saturn will be, you know, at some point um, providing some challenges, but I always say those challenges are just asking you to think outside the box uh, for Geminis and Sagittarius. Um, for Virgos, of course, this is gonna be an opposition for you. So, uh, and I'll talk about this as an individual signs, but just generally speaking, it could have you having to deal with superiors, rules and regulations. Now for, for Cancers and Scorpios, we've got a trine happening here with a Saturn. So if you've got your Ascendant, Sun, or a big conglomeration of planets, which I have <laughs> in either Cancer or Scorpio, you can expect some real assistance here uh, that you've not seen for 30 years uh, with regards to um, Either, you know, rules and regulations working for you or you setting down structures in your life um, that really work to support you, right? Those trines are there to support you. And um, so that's a good thing, right? Now, when we look with, at two other signs, we look at Taurus and Capricorn. There are sextiles um, that are formed to your sign with this um, Saturn in Pisces. And so this is a little lighter in terms of influence compared to a trine, but it provides you opportunities should you choose to accept them. What are those opportunities? It could be opportunities to work with um, more senior people. It could be opportunities for you to put structures down in your life, but you have a choice. Do you want to do it or not? Um, it could literally have, especially some Taurians, building things at this time where you get the green light to build your own home or to renovate your own home as well. But Capricorns will also have opportunities here too. Um, it can also be um, new responsibilities. Um, this may also be happening to some Taurians and Cap Capricorns where you have to take on additional responsibilities in your life. And this doesn't have to be a bad thing, right? It could be something like somebody gets pregnant and you have this welcome child uh, that is now uh, a potential in your life at this time. All right, moving down to Pluto. So Pluto is probably, I mean, Saturn's big too, uh, but Pluto, uh, you know, really has, uh, is a long acting thing here. That's a well over, uh, well over 250 years. We'll just leave it at a round figures, but it's over 250 years in terms of it coming round uh, to, to come into your um, chart again. So for the vast majority of people, if not all people, uh, Pluto going into Aquarius is a once in a lifetime thing in your lifetime, right? And so this happens on the 24th of March, 2023 to 2044. So it's a pretty long influence that we have here. I just see this as very positive too. 
uh, Pluto going into Aquarius is really having us transforming a whole lot of things that are Aquarian. At its base, it will be transforming society and bringing it to a higher level. Enlightenment of how we should be treating each other is going to um, transform, right? I'm going to be more positive with regards to people being treated more equally here. Uh, but Aquarius also rules literally outer space and anything scientific. So I would say there's going to be great progress uh, and great transformation with regards to our understanding of not only outer space, but science and anything in that realm that we don't know about yet. We're going to be enlightened over those years between 2023 and 2044. Um, so stay tuned for what uh, stuff we've not seen yet, right? Literally, we've not seen yet that will help transform our world. Now, previously, a significant time period where we had Pluto and Aquarius it was kind of around uh, what was called a period of enlightenment. It was the US and French uh, Civil War. Um, I've already done a video on Pluto uh, ingressing into Aquarius. I'll put the link down here below and I went through all the um, sun signs and ascendants as well. I think you'll really enjoy it. I, I really tried to, to dig into some significant history as well to help people understand um, at least get an idea of what, what might be ahead for you. Uh, now, in terms of what effect this is going to have on different signs, um, Pluto going into Aquarius, first and foremost, is going to be opposing Leo, Leo ascendants, Leo suns, conglomeration of planets in Leo, but it really takes its time. So, I mean, Pluto in 2023 will barely get into uh, zero degrees and some minutes of Aquarius. It's really not going to be to the following year, 2024, 2025, that we really have Pluto exerting the effect. But make no mistake about it. My analysis tells me that we are going to see some big changes in 2023 with regards to pe how people are in, in our society um, are treated, right? There's going to be a, a bigger um, emphasis on fairness and tangibly being able to see that, right? Okay, so for you, Leo, this is going to have an effect of you having to deal with things probably from a standpoint of your partner. I'll get into it in your sun sign, but we'll just leave it at that. Now, when we look at, um, we look at squares, we're looking at a square to Taurus and, uh, of course, to Scorpio. Now, as I said, this takes a long time for Pluto to start exerting effects. So unless you've got something at zero degrees um, or, you know, one degree, let's take it to there, the next few years will not be affected by squares or oppositions with Pluto at this time, right? And I'll continue to cover this over the years, of course, and bring things more into focus for you. Uh, and of course, there's always other things going on in the universe. It's not just this direct effect. But Pluto at its core likes to transform things. And it also likes to illuminate the truth, right? Yeah. All right, so it forms some lovely trines to both Gemini and Libra. Okay, so this also is going to be bringing in some beautiful energy for both those signs with regards to transformation. And I'll cover a little bit more detail in each of your signs later on uh, in the video. But this is positive energy again for transformation. So it just, with a trine, especially with a powerful planet like Pluto that likes to transform things, it will bring to Geminis and Librans just an easier, um, more um, satisfying, I guess, um, energy of transformation. It'll be easier to transform whatever it is that you need to transform over those many years. Um, all right, we'll leave it at that for Pluto. All right, so the other thing that happens, of course, we have the North Nodes, which currently, as I'm making this video, are still in Taurus, and they will remain into Taurus, you know, for a little while into 2023. They actually change signs and go into Aries, which, of course, is the first sign of the Zodiac, on the 18th of July, 2023. So certainly this is going to affect anybody that has their own North Nodes uh, in Aries. But as a sign, of course, Aries will be at the forefront with regards to 
uh, changing destiny paths at this point. And it all depends, of course, what you have in Aries. Uh, but certainly the folks that have their North Nodes in Aries will be very much affected by this. And of course, the opposite sign, which is Libra, is where the South Nodes will be. So both Libra and um, Aries will have a direct effect over the next one and a half years from approximately mid-July to 2023. That's how long the nodes, the transiting nodes, stay in a sign. And importantly, the nodes different than planets, they start at 29 degrees. So there's 30 degrees in every sign, right? And so the north nodes always start at the end of a sign and then go backwards. So in July 2023, those north nodes going into Aries will start at 29 degrees and then make their way back over a year and a half to come up to one degree and zero degrees of Aries. So certainly um, I'm wishing... Um, a new wonderful destiny path opening up for those folks that do have their north nodes in uh, Aries. And don't forget, we still have Chiron in Aries too. So there may be links for some people with um, true healing at this time, right? Uh, in terms of changing your destiny. Yeah. And I could cover that more. As I said, this is just more of an overview for folks. All right. So when we look at any of the retrogrades that are happening in 2023, um, obviously there's Mercury retrogrades. We've got three of them going on. That's typical. We can have more than that in a year, but in this year it's three of them. Um, but notably we have a Venus retrograde that's going to be happening and it's in Leo. Now Venus will be in Leo starting in June, 2023, right the way through the first week of September. So this really covers that whole period of the summer period, right? Which in the summer period in many ways, especially like August time period, which is the height of summer, is really represented by the sign of Leo too. But the other thing that Leo represents uh, is true love. It represents children. Um, and individually, it represents our own business. And it asks us to be our authentic self. It gives us potential opportunities for anything creative as well. But the other thing that it covers is royalty. So typically we look at Leo and royalty being covered by that sign. And so I thought from a collective level that we could see between June and September 2023 um, some kind of um, big changes and developments with regards to royalty. Now this is a Venus retrograde, so I saw this as a number of things. Certainly we, when we talk about royalty, a lot of times the first thing we think of is British royalty. And for sure, we already know that this is going on with uh, King Charles, but this time period of June to September, uh, we'll see him changing a lot of things uh, in royalty um, and the crown. There will be a lot of things that he changes up that will probably be more manifested uh, and put into effect in September, 2023. I thought with this Venus, I thought this could actually be some planned changes for those royalty uh, that actually are females at this time. So I saw that as two things, British royalty, as well as royalty that has uh, females prominent at this time. There may be some changes there as well. And it doesn't necessarily have to be with the monarch or the, the queen. There could be other women that are very much influenced in here in royalty where there will be some changes. Hopefully, all positive changes. All right, the Mercury retrogrades, um, the first one that we have happen in 2023 is a Mercury retrograde in Taurus. So again, we're featuring Taurus here again, right? <coughs> and this is going to start on the 21st of April at 15 degrees of Taurus. And it will go direct on the 15th of May awfully close to that Jupiter going into Taurus, right? At five degrees of Taurus. So this Mercury retrograde in Taurus stays in Taurus. Sometimes it changes signs and I'll talk about that Mercury retrograde in a minute. Um, so this could have um, just some of us, this could have a reconsideration on a global level uh, regarding our money markets again, right? Uh, foodstuffs as well. There may have to be some kind of reorganization with regards to getting foodstuffs together during this time period, April uh, to May 2023. Um, but certainly uh, for Taurians, this will directly affect you as well, especially if you've got something around the 15 
or five degree mark of um, Taurus. We also have a new moon, you know, supporting this Mercury retrograde going direct. Um, and that's going to be a few days later. The new moon in Taurus at 20. So it's just a new moon, not an eclipse. 28 degrees of Taurus happens on the 19th of May. So again, this whole time period uh, of May 2023, I think is a big, huge um, time of money changes, uh, food types, things, construction, um, in some respects, our, our security of ourselves um, and the earth that we live on, right, may come up for some kind of important um, review isn't the right word, but Im importance that we have to take care of, right? All right, so the next Mercury retrograde uh, we have happen is going to be on the 23rd of August, and that will be staying in Virgo, at, starting at 21 degree of Virgo, and then it'll go direct at eight degrees of Virgo on the 15th of September. Now, classically, we have um, Mercury retrogrades being a little more important if the Mercury retrograde happens in a sign that rules it. And that, of course, is Virgo and Gemini. So we know that the 23rd of August right through the 15th of September 2023, that Mercury retrograde is going to be important with regards to anything to do with communications, uh, messaging, um, can be contracts as well. Uh, I say with the Virgo, get all your details correct and double check uh, anything to do with contracts and that should you have to be signing something, say you've taken on a new job or something or a buying a house or something, that Mercury retrograde asks you to make sure you look at the details, right? Uh, the next Mercury retrograde is going to be in Capricorn. And of course, we had a Mercury retrograde happen um, the end of December or start at the end of December 2022. So Capricorn, you're going to be hit here again by another Mercury retrograde uh, in 2023. That starts at 8 degrees of Capricorn on the 13th of December 2023 and goes direct, but this time it's in Sagittarius. It goes direct at 22 degrees of Sagittarius on the 2nd of January 2024. And we also have with that Mercury um, retrograde going direct to 22 degrees of Sagittarius being in a fire sign, it will trine the north nodes, certainly in um, Aries at that time. So that's the 2nd of Jan 2024. Um, so it's interesting, we've got those two signs highlighted here towards the end of the year and early next year, 2024. So check to see, again, 8 degrees of Capricorn or 22 degrees of Sagittarius. This may actually affect you directly. Okay, I think that kind of wraps up what I have to say with regards to an introduction to 2023. Again, I want to leave this with the fact that I feel this is a very positive year for us and uh, that we've got a lot to look forward to that's going to be positive for all of us. Um, but especially for society as a whole, healing and society of a, as a whole having a better fairness to, to and for everyone. All right, so next I'm going to start with our individual signs. And uh, because this is a, um, uh, a start of a new year forecast. All right, so we're moving on here to Scorpio. And Scorpio, of course, you've been hosting those south nodes of the moon in your sign. And you will for a little while still but they will in 2023 change and um, go into Libra. So in many respects, Scorpio, this um, is going to be a little bit of a tie up year for you, especially with regards to having to either physically let things go, mentally let things go, change the way you think about things. That's, this is a tie up year for all that. So whatever huge energies, um, and a lot of Scorpios have been putting in huge energies to change their lives. This is going to see some real, I think, progress to be able to tie things up in some ways and know that 
you can now proceed forward with this new way of doing things. Especially a new way of having let go of things that don't suit you or really um, <clears throat> benefit you. All right, so let's start off with the eclipses that are going to continue through either your sign, Scorpio, or your opposite sign of Taurus through 2023. So Scorpio, you've got a full moon eclipse that's happening at 14 degrees of Scorpio on the 5th of May, 2023. And this is going to be the last eclipse for 2023 that happens in Scorpio. And so you should look to May as some kind of wrap up for yourself because you're also going to have other favorable things happening for you too, right? May is a month where there's a lot of stuff happening in Taurus. And of course, Taurus sextiles your sign. So look to May, uh, Scorpio, for some, not only wrap up for things happening in your life, but also for some really positive opportunities <clears throat> to manifest some things in your life. Now, this may manifest through your partner because, of course, the opposite sign of Taurus is the seventh house for you. So you, for some Scorpios, I'm telling you, your partner could bring in some great benefits for you. Uh, some that you may not even be able to see. It could have some Scorpios acquiring a lot more possessions, maybe even real estate, but it's as a result of your partner. Maybe your partner having some unusual opportunities coming their way that you get to benefit from Scorpio. All right, when we look at um, Jupiter that is going to start off the year uh, in Aries, that will be in your sixth house, Scorpio. But then mid-May till mid-May 2024, you will have Jupiter in Taurus in your seventh house. <clears throat> and again, emphasizing benefits and growth with regards to your partner. But you too, Scorpio, could have somebody very beneficial and lucky for you come in as a marriage partner. So for those Scorpios that are there looking to get married, um, certainly May could be an awesome month to get married for Scorpios, uh, but it could be the month that somebody appears for you uh, that's uh, of significance, uh, that has some longevity for you with regards to a relationship. Um, and that could be of great, great benefit for some Scorpios here. So even though it's an opposition, it doesn't really matter. That Jupiter in your seventh house could bring into view someone that's a great benefit to you from a marriage standpoint. But it can also affect business partnerships, right? Because that whole Scorpio um, Taurus axis is also, eh, generally speaking, to do with money. So this could have some Scorpios um, also develop some phenomenal business partnerships at this time too. Um, and for those lucky Scorpios, you get both a great marriage partner as well as awesome business partnership developing at this time. So good luck with that Scorpio. Very excited for you. <clears throat> and kind of supporting that would be Saturn going into Pisces and that aspects uh, you by a trine, because you're both water signs, but it aspects your fifth house of true love. Um, the fifth house is other things too. It's being creative projects, being authentic. Uh, it's children, that sort of thing. And because it's Saturn, uh, it could have some new responsibilities with regards to, well, first of all, it could bring in a serious love relationship, um, but it could also bring responsibilities to maybe having a child come into your life. Um, and maybe even a pregnancy for some Scorpios as well, if that's what uh, is on the cards for you. But it can also bring, for those folks, uh, Scorpios that are very creative, this could be a phenomenal time uh, for two years and a half, right? Saturn's going to be in um, your fifth house, aspecting your fifth house. I would say this could be uh, a very, very productive two years and a half for some Scorpios with regards to anything creative. And it doesn't mean you have to be painting pictures, although there will be Scorpios that do that. Um, but anything in the creative realm uh, could be absolutely outstanding for two and a half years where you get some real tangible um, 
things come creatively through your own um, expression of your authentic self. But some of that expression could come as a result of a child um, and or uh, a true love coming your way as well, right? Right, so we'll end here with the new moon in Scorpio. Your new moon, Scorpio, is going to be on the 13th of November, uh, and it will be at 20 degrees of Scorpio. So again, let's look back to your chart and see what you have in Scorpio here. So for certainly for those folks that, say, have their ascendant or their sun in particular at, say, 19, 20, or 21 degrees of Scorpio, this will bring in a lot of newness for the whole birthday year, right? Um, so for those folks that uh, have their birthdays, uh, the 12th, the 13th, or 14th, there's a direct effect here of some new start for you. Um, so enjoy that new moon, Scorpio. Okay, Scorpio, um, I would love to hear from you, of course, too. Um, I'd like to hear from Scorpios that uh, are affected by that um, eclipse, that, that final full moon eclipse in Scorpio in May, um, because May is a big sort of seminal month for Taurus and Scorpio in particular. Um, for those Scorpios that are okay about commenting, I'd like to hear from you uh, in the May time period to let me know what's happened. Best of luck, Scorpio. Bye for now. All right, everybody, that wraps up this video. Thank you for listening. Um, I want to thank um, all my viewers, uh, both my viewers as well as my listeners on Spotify. I really appreciate all your support by coming to my channels. Uh, it makes a big difference in what I can give and do for you. Um, but I want to put, put out a special thanks um, for my clients all this year. You've made a difference to me making better videos. Um, I've been able to purchase better equipment um, to bring, um, you know, a, a better quality of video to you. Hopefully you've noticed that. All right. I'm wishing everyone uh, a great 2023. I'm, I'm very optimistic for it. I think a lot of things are going to be cleared up and a lot of things being put in place that will benefit all of us. If you want your chart done, of course, I would love to do it. It's an ideal time to do it. Uh, end of uh, the year or the beginning of the next year. Bye for now, everybody. Sending you lots of love and um, lots of positive energy for a great 2023. Bye for now.